The M50 Sherman was an Israeli upgrade of the United States Army M4 Sherman medium tank. It was developed in the mid-50s to keep the venerable World War II era tank effective and able to face other contemporary vehicles of the Arab armies of neighboring states even 15 years after its development. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article covering this Israeli modification of the legendary Sherman. We would like to thank all of our patrons for their support. The patron of this video is Logan Hartke. Thank you Logan for your help. After the creation of the State of Israel in 1948, the Israeli Defense Force needed to arm itself with modern vehicles and weapons. The new nation had to defend itself against the Arab armies of neighboring states, which were rearming and equipping themselves by purchasing modern equipment from the Soviet Union. Immediately, many Israeli delegations set off around the world in search of military equipment and vehicles. In the early 50s, the Israeli army had a heterogeneous M4 Sherman fleet, consisting of practically every version, but the IDF High Command immediately realized that the versions armed with 75mm guns were no longer able to face more modern vehicles, even the similarly venerable T-34-85. At the beginning of 1953, an Israeli delegation was sent to France to evaluate the new AMX 1375 light tank. This vehicle was judged favorably in terms of armament and mobility, but not in protection. In 1953, Finland designed for Israel a version of the Sherman armed with a 75mm cannon of Finnish production, but the project was not accepted by Israeli engineers. After careful reflection, the IDF purchased some AMX 1375s, but realized that the 75mm cannon would have been more effective on a medium tank hull. Not being able to find adequate armored vehicles able to replace the AMX hull on the international market, the IDF decided to improve the Sherman's performance with this powerful cannon. Israel asked France for help in developing a prototype. At the start of 1954, a team of Israeli technicians was sent to France and, along with other French engineers, took two different vehicles, an M10 tank destroyer and an M4A2 Sherman, modifying the two turrets to accommodate the AMX 1375's cannon, which had a bigger breech and a longer recoil. Both vehicles were called M50, However, the development of the M50 on the M10 GMC chassis was abandoned. Some M10 GMCs arrived in Israel without the main gun and were then converted with 17-pounders or CN7550 cannons and used for crew training until 1966. The design of the new Sherman continued and, in 1955, the first prototype was completed with a modified gun breech, no autoloader, and the MX-13 telescope of the AMX-13 stretched by 40 centimeters to adapt it to the new turret. In the summer of 1955, the first tests of the new vehicle, called the M50, began. Firing trials took place at the Borg tank range in France and were unsuccessful. The vehicle had balance problems and there were still issues with the recoil of the cannon. Only after significant work was invested in improving the gun breech and the recoil system and a new counterweight was welded to the back of the ta turret in late 1955, the vehicle was accepted by the Israeli army. The turret was sent by ship to Israel, where it was mounted on an M4A4 Sherman hull. It was tested in the Negev Desert and received positive judgment from the Israeli High Command. Assembly lines were prepared to modify the standard Israeli Shermans to the new M50 Sherman. The first 25 M50 Shermans were built clandestinely in France and then sent to Israel in mid-1956. 
they were assigned to one armoured company in time to see service in the 1956 Suez Crisis. The M50 Sherman was a medium tank based on any available Sherman hulls in IDF inventory. After the Suez Crisis, the first Israeli M4 Shermans began to be modified locally. The same workshops where the Sherman tanks acquired from all parts of the world had been refurbished a few years earlier were used for the conversion. In total, about 300 M50 Shermans were converted for and by the Israeli army. These tanks took part in the Suez Crisis in 1956, the Six Day War in 1967 and the Yom Kippur War in 1973. During the last conflict, they proved inadequate in fighting against the more modern Soviet vehicles that the Arab countries had at their disposal, such as the IS-3M, the T-54, T-55 and the T-62. Between 1973 and 1976, almost all the M-50s were removed from service with the Israeli army. Some vehicles were passed on to Chile and Lebanese militias. The M-50 conversions used turrets with M-34 and M-34A1 mantlets. These had split or round commander's cupolas and loader's hatches. The turrets of the standard M-4 Sherman 75s were modified with a new turret extension and mantlet, providing more space to accommodate the larger main armament. Starting from the first vehicles, a cast iron counterweight was welded on the back of the turret to balance the extra weight of the turret extension and of the new longer cannon. Almost all vehicles had four 80mm smoke launchers of French production mounted, two on each side of the turret. These were not present on the prototype. They replaced the 50mm M3 smoke mortar mounted inside the turret. An M79 pedestal for a 12.7mm Browning M2HB heavy machine gun was mounted on the few vehicles on which it was missing. A second ventilator was mounted on the turret counterweight and the radio system was improved, keeping the US-made SCR-538 radio but adding a French-made radio positioned inside the turret counterweight alongside with a second antenna, not always mounted, on top. The first vehicles built in France were based on M4, M4 Composite, a few M4A1 and M4A4T Sherman hulls. The M4A4T was a standard M4A4 Sherman re-engined by the French between 1945 and 1952 with a petrol Continental R975 C4 engine giving out 420 horsepower. This engine was common in France after the war thanks to the supply of thousands of these engines by the US during the Second World War. In French nomenclature, it was known as the Char M4A4T Moteur Continental, where T means transformé or transformed. Following the French example, all the Israeli Shermans were planned to be re-engined with the Continental engine and receive the needed changes to the engine deck. After the 1956 war, the Israeli workshops started to slowly convert their Shermans with the new engine and French cannon. By 1959, only 50 vehicles were converted, but there is no indication if this number included the original batch of vehicles sent by France. During the same year, the Israeli understood that the Continental R975C4 used on all the converted Shermans was not the best engine for this heavier Sherman version. The engine was no longer able to offer the M50 sufficient mobility and was breaking after long drives, making continuance maintenance and repairs by the crew compulsory. In late 1959, an Israeli M4A3 Sherman was tested with a new engine, the US Cummins VT8 460 turbo diesel engine delivering 460 horsepower. 
The mounting of the new engine did not require any changes to the engine compartment of the M4A3 and only the engine deck was lightly modified with new air intakes with sand filters and the radiator was also modified to increase engine cooling. Accepted for production, the first batch of Cummins engines arrived in Israel only in early 1960 and the first vehicles with this conversion were the M50s produced after 1960, first seen in a parade in early 1961. From mid-1960 to July 1962, all the M50s built, more than a hundred, were powered by this more powerful engine. The suspension was also changed. The old vertical volute spring suspension with 16-inch tracks did not offer acceptable top speed and comfort for the crew. For this reason, they were substituted by the more modern horizontal volute spring suspension with 23-inch wide tracks to ensure good mobility even on sandy soils. After the engine change, some M50s still used the old VVSS suspension for a period before receiving the new model. In 1967, during the Six Days War, all the M50 Shermans had the new Cummins engine and the HVSS suspension. The two different variants of the M50 Sherman were named the Mark I or Continental for the Continental engine version and the Mark II or Cummins for the Cummins engine version. The Mark I version weighed 33.5 tons could reach a lower maximum speed and had an autonomy of about 250 kilometers due to the petrol engine. The improved Mark II version weighed 34 tons, could reach a top speed of 42 kilometers per hour and had a range of 300 kilometers. The two standard 303 liter fuel tanks positioned on the sides of the engine compartment were left unchanged, but the exhaust system was modified. Like in the case of the turrets, the hulls of the M50 Sherman were of the early or mid type construction with small hatches and large hatches. The transmission cover was made of three pieces on the early type hull and from one cast piece for the mid and late types. The Continental version received a few upgrades such as the replacing of the transmission with a better French one. All Mark II Cummins vehicles had holder frames for cans of fuel and water, spare wheels and tracks, and two boxes for materials on the sides of the hull. A good feature given that lots of the combat would take place in the desert. A new cover for the horn on the left side of the frontal armor plate was installed, along with two supports for barbed wire, one between the crew hatches and the second on the transmission cover. On the rear armor plate, a new telephone connected to the the intercom system of the crew was installed in order to keep in contact with the infantry that fought alongside the tank. A prototype variant of the M50 Sherman was built at the Tel Hashomer workshops in the early or mid 60s called Degem Yud. Degem means model and Yud is the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The chassis of an M50 Sherman Mark II on the hull of an M4A3 large hatch was lowered by 30 centimeters in order to lower the tank. After the first tests, the project was abandoned and the prototype was probably scrapped. The whole armor of the M50 Sherman was left unchanged, but the thickness varied between the different versions of the M4 Sherman used as a basis. On the small hatch M4A1, M4A1 composite, M4A2 and on the M4A4, the frontal armor was 51 mm thick angled at 56 degrees. For the large hatch variants of the M4A1 and M4A3, the thickness was increased to 63 mm but the slope was reduced to 47 degrees in order to accommodate the new, bigger hatches. Some vehicles had the World War II upgrades with additional 25mm applique armor plates welded on the sides of the hull, increasing the armor thickness in vulnerable spots and also on the frontal glacis 
two 25mm hatch guards were installed. The turret, with a frontal armor thickness of 76mm, received a new gun mantlet and turret extension with a thickness of 70mm. On the back of the turret, the addition of a cast iron counterweight significantly increased the protection, although this was probably not made of ballistic steel. As on the hulls, some M4 Shermans had 25mm applique armor added on the right side of the turret, covering part of the crew. The cannon of the M50 was the same as that of the AMX 1375, the CN 7550, also known as the 75SA50 L61.5. It could reach a firing rate of 10 rounds per minute. This cannon had a muzzle velocity of 1000 meters per second with armor piercing rounds. The Israelis did not want to install the AMX-13 autoloader on their Shermans as they believed it to be unreliable and would otherwise have taken up too much space inside the turret. Above the cannon there was a large searchlight for night operations, but due to its size this light was easily damaged by light weapons fire. Therefore, it was often not mounted on vehicles. The secondary armament remained unchanged. Two Browning M1919 7.62mm machine guns were carried, one coaxial to the cannon and one in the hull, to the right of the driver. The anti-aircraft machine gun was the typical 12.7mm Browning M2 HB. At an undefined time between the Six Day War and the Yom Kippur War, the whole machine gun and the machine gunner position were eliminated. In some cases, the spare M1919 machine gun was mounted on the turret, used by the tank commander or the loader in an anti-aircraft role. The total ammunition carried consisted of 62 rounds, of which 50 were stowed in the hull in two 25 round racks, nine ready to use on the left side of the turret basket, and the last three on the floor of the turret basket. The French cannon could fire a range of shells. The obus explosif, explosive shell, had a projectile weight of 6.2 kilograms and a total weight of almost 21 kilograms. The perforant ogive traceur model 1951 Armor piercing, capped, tracer shell, also called POT 51A, had a muzzle velocity of 1000 meters per second, a projectile weight of 6.4 kilograms, and a total weight of 21 kilograms. It could penetrate 110 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor angled at 90 degrees, or 60 millimeters at 30 degrees at a distance of 1000 meters. The perforant Kof. Ogive Traceur Model 1951, Armor Piercing Caped Ballistic Cap Tracer, also called PCOT 51P, had a tungsten carbide cap, which gave it a muzzle velocity of over 1000 meters per second. It had the same weight as the APC shell, with a projectile weighing 6.4 kilograms and a total weight of 21 kilograms. It could pierce 170 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor at 90 degrees and 90 millimeters at 30 degrees at a distance of 1000 meters. Other shells that could be fired by this gun were high explosive anti-tank and armor piercing discarding sabo. However, it is not certain if they were ever used by the Israeli tanks. The first ammunition stocks were sent from France by train to Italy from where they were shipped to Israel. By 1959, the ammunition was being produced by Israeli companies. The secondary armament ammunition capacity was 4,750 rounds for the 7.62mm machine guns and 600 rounds for the 12.7mm Browning. There were also 8 reserve smoke bombs for the smoke launchers. The crew also had access to five M3A1 grease guns with 900.45 ACP caliber rounds. These were subsequently replaced by local produced IMI Uzis. 
Finally, two boxes with a total of 12 hand grenades of different models were carried. Usually, like in the US tank, these consisted of 6 fragmentation grenades, 2 thermite grenades and 4 smoke grenades. The smoke grenades and the two incendiary ones were transported in a box on the left wall of the turret, while the other grenades were transported in another box under the gunner's seat. Over the years, the grenades used were of French or American production models or even Soviet captured ones. The crew of the M50 consisted of five men, as in a standard Sherman. These were the driver and machine gunner in the hull, to the left and right of the transmission. The gunner was on the right of the turret, in front of the tank commander, and the loader was operating on the left side. Many photos show M50 and M51 Shermans without the 7.62mm machine gun in the hull. At an unclear moment between the years after the Six Day War and before the Yom Kippur War, the IDF decided to remove this position in order to better allocate the limited numbers of soldiers at its disposal. As already mentioned, in some cases, the Browning M1919 machine gun was mounted on the turret and used by the tank commander or the loader. It should be noted that the IDF's meal ready to eat rations were developed for tank crews and were therefore subdivided into groups of five individual rations. Only after the Yom Kippur War, these were reduced to four individual rations. Thank you for watching the first part of this three part series on the Israeli M50 Sherman tank. The second part of this series will be coming out tomorrow, so until then, keep us in your sights.